David De Gea. David De Gea is leaving <laughs> United after 12 years of service following the expiration of his contract. Uh, the goalkeeper joined United from Atletico Madrid for 17 million pounds in 2011. He went on to make 545 appearances, keeping a club record 190 clean sheets. At the young age of 20, he made the move from Spain. Um, De Gea said in a statement, I want to express my unwavering gratitude and appreciation for the love of the last 12 years. We've achieved so much since my dear Sir Alex Ferguson brought me to this club. In his time, uh, he's won eight trophies with United, two Golden Gloves, and four Player of the Year awards. Um, guys, uh, the end of David De Gea has been quite, quite tumultuous, to put it, you know, lightly. You know, um, what are you guys' general thoughts and feelings on how that was all handled and his career in general? I think. It's, um, I mean, he's, I think he's been phenomenal for United. I think he's got a lot of recency bias towards how bad he's been. But I think people forget the last, like, nine years compared to what's happened in the last three or so. Last maybe two years rather than three. I think he's been brilliant. I think the club have very um, messed up. They've messed up with how this has got to the point of him being released and the announcement and what's gone through. But I think he's one of United's best goalkeepers that we've had. He's up there with... He's not as good as, like, Schmeichel and van der Sar, but he's definitely the level just below that in terms of, in my lifetime, what I've seen as goalkeeper for Man United. He is probably third or fourth in the list of the best goalkeepers I've seen at the club. And I think that speaks for itself, right? Most clean sheets he's ever had for the club, I think... Four, would you say four player of the season awards? That's four player of the season awards, yeah. Yeah, like you know, and he's done it all with pretty shoddy defenses in front of him at times. A lot of that during the Fergie year was good defenses, and then it all just sort of capitulated a little bit. And I think he, he's come through a lot of adversity and he's done really well. And I think he's, yeah, I think he, he's been absolutely awesome for the club. Right time to move on, right time to, to do it. But I think the club could have done it better. Um, I think and it also brings you saying it brings an end to an era it's the there is now no Sir Alex Ferguson signings in the Man United squad so it is a completely new squad since Fergie left there's no more Fergie S players in there um, and the other thing is there's no for the first time since pre the Premier League started there's no Premier League winners at Man United anymore nobody in that current squad has a Premier League winners medal True. So, yeah. Two, true, two true. end of an era. But I've, yeah, I think an absolutely brilliant goalkeeper, but the club have handled his departure pretty poorly. <laughs> right. It's been it's been quite a. He's taken a lot of heat on social media as well. Uh, Milo. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean to. This isn't a dig. Okay. You know, usually it is, but first, it's not this first time. One of the night. It's it's <laughs> usually it is, but it's not. Uh, do you remember who was Arsenal's final? title winning player you know like uh, do you remember I, don't, I, I can't is it must have been the 2004 title right it would have been yep would it, was it like uh, Sesk or I don't know, I don't know. yeah maybe Fabregas I'd have to I'd have to that's a curveball for thought, you I, I haven't thought about that in a while I, I do okay. want to touch upon De Gea um, I mean Colt, you know you, you United chaps are gonna dive in a bit deeper on him which is fine um, but I, I will say this he was a keeper that just seemed to always play well against Arsenal. And I know, I know, last season we got we got the better of you a couple of times. Fine, but you know, it, it, or one time, sorry. Um, you know, being honest, but yeah, uh, De Gea just seemed to relish playing Arsenal, and uh, man, it was frustrating for me sometimes because I'd I'd be watching your results, seeing you come in to a game against Arsenal, thinking. Well, De Gea's not in great form. This this is a good time to play him, you know. And then he would stand on his head and just like an unbelievable shot stopper. And I know one of his weaknesses that people talk about is is his feet. He's not so good with his feet. Um, in a in an age when a lot of teams are playing systems that require, you know, that's why Ramsdale's been kind of really good for Arsenal. 
um and i, I think he's excelled it's just because he can he can join in on that and he's not stressed too much about it you know what i mean it, it's the only thing he's i'm more worried about with him would be the the pass backs and i know that um yeah i, I know that daher is is not known for for playing with his feet but as a shot stopper really really good keeper and as you said cultured like looking at keepers that you've had you know since schmeichel um he's got to be up there he has to be yeah i, I think he's third behind schmeichel and van der Sar. i mean the clubs put him down as he's in the, in the books as a club legend apparently um which is pretty interesting he was also supposed to have a testimonial in 2020 which is interesting timing um but it was canceled due to covid um He'll Huff. have one, though, I expect, right? Yeah, they'll bring him back. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this rate, who knows? But <laughs> They should um, do a team of all goalkeepers against another team. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> the American fans would love that, right, Milo? No. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> no. I'd love um, it because it would be his testimonial. I'd love it if he went, yeah, yeah, I'll have a testimonial, but I have to play up front. Yeah. Oh, no, that'd I completely be great. throw a spanner in the works. I'd love that. <laughs> Hoff, I mean, maybe this is kind of similar to you. Hugo Lloris is on the way out, correct? I believe. I was, yeah, I I draw a lot of parallels between them. He's only been at Spurs. I think this would be his 11th season. So he's been there 10 years, but it's still both great shot stoppers. Um, and, and when they made their move to the Premier League, goalkeepers playing with your feet, not necessarily as important as it, not nearly as important as it is now, um, just how much the game has changed. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate that the game has kind of passed guys like that by, um, that they, I don't know, they didn't evolve either by choice or they couldn't somehow. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate because I I love watching shot stoppers. I mean, that's, that, that's the number one job and yeah they both did it really well <laughs> it's that moment when you feel like a goal is about to happen and they just kind of like somehow just a foot comes around or a, a, an elbow or a face or something they just stop the goal um pretty mm -hmm. amazing stuff quick trivia mm -hmm. david de gea was the longest serving player for united do you know who the, is now the longest serving player for united anybody As in anybody? currently in the squad currently in the squad yeah harry Have, McGuire. <laughs> It's not Harry Maguire, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> um, he, he joined in I'll 2014. Martial? Martial is number two, so he's second Ooh. oldest. He is second oldest. Lindelof? He's not not Lindelof. Oh, it's got to be Rashford. Rashford is third. He he made his debut after Martial, which I didn't. Oh wow. Realize. For the, okay. the same season, just a couple months after. Yeah. February 16. I don't know, who is in. it? It is Luke Shaw. Oh, wow. Luke okay. Shaw, he's wow. been there since 14. 2014. Oh. Um, we got a couple <laughs> uh, highlighted messages here. There we go, NL got it right there, Luke Shaw. Mordecai says, De Gea overstayed his welcome, but was a great keeper. He has the misfortune as being a keeper on the cusp uh, of the, on the rise of sweeper keepers that play at their feet. Yeah, you guys want to talk about the the you know, he was kind of that final sort of old, old school keeper. You want to say maybe? I don't know. I don't know how Yoris is with no, his I, feet. I, or, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think you still got still got some other keepers in there, um, Martinez and mm -hmm. um, true. You know, Chesney. Nick Pope is old school. Yeah, Nick Pope. Yeah, Pope's old school as well. Um, yeah. I, I I definitely don't think Pickford is known for playing with his feet either. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I I think um, yeah. I think part of it, right, is he's got. I'm not I'm not trying to say De Gea. It's not De Gea's fault that he's not good with his feet. Cause obviously, he's the footballer. But I think part of it has to be the issue with maybe coaching staff. If you wanna, it, the, when I say the coaching staff, I mean that. If their plan was to always play out from the back, then the goalkeeping coaches should be working with the goalkeepers to say this, or the passing coaches or the tactical coaches or whatever, should be working with the goalkeepers to practice this. 
But then I think yeah. part of that is you can't blame the coaching staff in Man United sense because we've had such a lurch of directions under managers that you yeah. why would the coaching staff want to be training something when Jose Marino didn't want him to play out from the back with his feet? Absolutely. Like, Louis Van Gaal would have wanted him to play out from the back with his feet because Louis Van Gaal was all about dominating possession, having a solid defence and doing that. And you lurch from these managers to managers that want to play differently. Yeah. Like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was a case of if he got the ball counter-attack quickly, so don't bother passing it out from the back and try and get it into the space behind the defenders. And I think, so yes, it is De Gea's fault that he can't do it, but I don't think he's been helped because in that transition to sweeper keeping, there hasn't been a consistency at the club to say we're going to play with a sweeper keeper. Absolutely. Think, like, when, you, when you consider like Arsenal, for example, there's always been a, since the Wenger days, obviously when I really started paying attention to Arsenal, was there's always been that element of possession, passing, keeping the ball, moving it up through the defence midfield attack. So the goalkeepers have always been needed to play from the back obviously i don't think layman was amazing with his feet al Mooney was amazing with his feet but there's always been that understanding it, 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 that's how i see it and i don't or more of a maybe not understand more of a known element between all the coaching staff and all the managers that come in that this is what they're expected to do whereas man united just lurched from Mar van Howe to Mourinho to solskjaer to ragnick to Ed, Eric Ten Hag are all completely different, but I don't know. Maybe I'm getting that wrong, Milo. I, I, but no, I, th I think the I think you're onto something with the fact that you're changing systems every time yeah. you change manager and all the rest of it. Um, what I will say though, as well, is you, you've got to be careful what you wish for, because you know I, I think Arsenal went from Seaman, who was just solid. Everyone knew he was solid, great keeper. We went to Layman for a short period of time, who had a phenomenal couple of seasons but he was very, very temperamental. And then after that, we had a string of keepers that just never really worked out. So if you find yeah. a keeper that you can keep for 10 years, I mean, was he 12 years, you said? 12 United, years, yeah. So yeah. United, United had him for 12 years. Like if you have a keeper that you can keep for a decade and rely upon to a certain degree, I think you've done all right. Yeah. Because it, it's not like keepers of that stature come around every single generation. So, yeah. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I think you have to. You know, he might not be viewed as a club legend, but if you look at it from that perspective, he's been a really good servant to the club. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, yeah. I think the the you know the, the club is coming out of such a tumultuous time. You know, it's just, the club's been run really poorly, and the succession. Um, you know, system for the hair just wasn't there, you know, and he's being, you know, the, the he's being kind of uh, scapegoated for it in a way because he's been set up to to kind of fail with this brand new system. You know, the we're, we're playing this possession style football for the first time in, in a while, this real systematic type, and it's just really setting up the hair to fail almost like kind of you guys both mentioned. Um, other... I mean, I'm going to annoy a few yeah. people, but I do think there's a huge difference between the older generation of fans, and I'll put myself in that, having supported Man United for 30 plus years, and understanding what De Gea has done over that period and looking past the last two years to the newer fan who have probably only seen, I don't know, the last five or six years of United, and half of that has been De Gea been, not been brilliant. And therefore, they don't see him as a, I think De Gea goes down as a, a, a club legend. I think to be in that bracket of just below Schmeichel and Van der Sar is huge. Like, go and watch Taibi. Go and watch Barthez's second season. Go and watch Raymond Howe. Go and watch, I mean, Nigel Spack. Roy was, Carroll. Uh, Roy Carroll. I mean, when we had all of these eras, right? That is terrible goal. <laughs> Yeah, and especially the post Alex uh, Ferguson era, you know, just and just how how poor we've been, and he's just been like, you know, easy first name on the on the team sheet every time. He's gonna make majority of the saves, you know. Now maybe he's teetering off a little bit, but like that was such a crucial. He made so many crucial saves throughout uh, the years, and it's people forget about those and they just focus on these like last two two three games of the season of this season. Um, Ironically, a lot of crucial saves with his feet. <laughs> true, true. Um, Bottle Job says DDG is another case of players, uh, player born in the wrong era. If I had come 
in the game if he had come in the game earlier he'd be recognized as one of the best goalkeepers of all time no doubt and he's just another victim of the glazers turning him into the united the next scapegoat like they do to somebody every year it's been happening to many players at united and the fan base are full of sheep who follow <laughs> oh i lost the spot who follow uh, who follow the crowd and hate on the players instead of looking at the big picture. And that's one of the main reasons United will be trophyless. Oh my God. The fan base. Took quite a turn. We're turning on the <laughs> fan base. Um, NL says they tried, but the so-called legend couldn't. So they had to change the style. Like I said, go back and watch the games we had under Ole when Henderson played. You can't blame the coach. Onana will be coming in. Obviously, because yeah. it's NL, and I, we all disagree with most things he says. But um, <laughs> and I disagree with that because Dean Henderson has come through youth coaching in an era where sweeper keepers are needed. So Dean Henderson's so much younger than De Gea that his youth coaching at national and club level have been parts of system that have played out from the back. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer admitted when he was manager, he didn't pay attention to the under-23s. He let Nicky Butt run that tactically, whatever he wanted to do. So if Nicky Butt was doing a place playing system where the goalkeeper had to play with his feet, Dean Henderson was doing that for years at the club. So I, I don't Absolutely. agree that it's, it's De Gea's problem. They should have tried to coach him into playing what they wanted to do if it was consistent. Last one. Uh... And I was bringing up Onana, who's going to probably be the successor to him. 27-year-old Onana, apparently five, six-year deal, which will be nice. Um, you, all, you all saw the Champions League final. His, you know, he's very unique in that he plays almost like a third center back or you know, extra center back, um, which will be fun, you know. But I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, mistakes with that too, and you know, we'll be calling for his head in no time. I, I actually saw somebody post. I, I was going to share it with you guys, and I forgot. Somebody posted a montage of Onana mistakes, probably from his entire <laughs> career so far, because it was it was quite a substantial video. I'll see if I can dig it out, and I'll uh, I'll share it with you in the Discord. Yeah, I, I think once that signing is confirmed, we'll dig into it a bit more, right? As it sure. as a confirmed signing, yeah. but yeah, um... we'll definitely play that video. Yeah. <laughs> I think goalkeeping has generally just changed. I mean, Edison is regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, but he has a terrible, not terrible, he has a poor save percentage in the Premier League compared to other goalkeepers. It's just he's considered one of the best in the world because he's good with his feet, which doesn't, it does make sense, but it doesn't make sense because their primary job is to shot, stop goals going in, which he's not very good at. It's just that he doesn't have many shots at him. So, right. yeah. Last one here before we move along. Uh, Cruyff says, the Hay is a microcosm of Manchester United's failures since uh, Ferguson. I'd argue, actually, it's more to do with not adapting to the class of uh to the loss of the class of 92. They've adapted to the modern game. They failed to adapt to the modern game. And just think repeating the line, we're Manchester United, will make them successful. Jeez. Yeah, why does that one plan? Why does that one hit close to home for some reason? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys, anything else to add about David De Gea's moving on? I feel like the uh, maybe it's I don't watch United nearly as much as you guys. Um, I feel like his decline started when the Real Madrid move didn't happen. The fax machine. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I, I feel like a fax machine ruined, <laughs> not ruined his career, but it started it on a downward trend. Yeah, is I that, don't know. I is don't that know fair? <laughs> I don't know. There was a lot of bad blood, you know. There was a lot of bad blood there. 